A quick little bit about myself, because some of you haven't heard this. You can tell by my lack of an accent, or accent, however you want to look at it, that I wasn't born here. I was born and raised in the northeastern US. I spent a lot of time in school. I actually have a PhD that I'm not using. My first career out of university was actually in operations research and discrete event simulation. So I spent a lot of time building models of, well, systems to kill you and then some systems to keep you alive. And I got involved in that. And then in the 90s when Java became a thing, I thought, oh, this web development's kind of cool. I like, you can build an applet and play around with CGI scripts. And I started doing that. And then I found out that it paid better. So I started doing that more and stopped really doing OR, but finished my degree anyway. And then about five years ago, I launched into a third, degree, third career where I got focusing on application security. Basically, I said, well, I used to know how to develop. Now I can help everyone else develop securely, right? And I started learning about this. In my roles, I tend to be focused on software assurance. And when I say software assurance, Generically, I mean building a level of confidence that the applications we build do what we have told the world they do and don't do other bad things. And mainly, we're trying to build that confidence among all of our stakeholders, our users, our customers, our investors, that we're doing things right. And of course, for many of us, one of those stakeholders gets to be that third party auditor that's getting us some certification. I moved to New Zealand not quite a year and a half ago, where I joined Orion Health, and my role is around this software assurance. I've been active in OWASP for several years. When I showed up in New Zealand, I came to last year's OWASP New Zealand Day, said, hey, I'd like to help out with the Auckland group. And Kirk and Kim said, guess what? You're the Auckland group. <laughs> so here I am. After I got involved with chapters, then I became interested in helping out some of the projects, and I, obviously I got involved with SAM. So I've been on the core software assurance maturity model team since June. As it happens, I'm the only member of the core team that was willing to travel to New Zealand to give this talk, so I get to do it. So what is SAM? You can read this, but it's an open framework like all of our open projects in OWASP, and is looking at how you can develop a strategy for building software security, looking at the risks in your organization. So it's not a checklist, it's a list of appropriate practices, and a lot of those practices revolve around understanding the risks to your applications, your customers, their users. So the resources are focused on helping you look at these things. It can be used as both an assessment tool and then a tool for helping you decide where to go next in order to improve. Like most maturity models, you get a current level of maturity and then some recommended ideas for the kinds of things you should do next to build to a higher level of maturity. And of course, it's a model, so the George Box quote has got to be in the talk. All models are wrong, some models are useful. In this case, the model is particularly useful for this one context, really, of getting an idea of where we are as an organization or as a product group, whatever subset of the enterprise you want to use this tool with, and then look at what are the things we could focus on next to get better. This is not an absolute prescription for perfect security. Nothing ever is. It just gives you an idea of where you could consider focusing your resources and getting better as far as policies and practices to gain some benefit and be a more mature, optimizing organization. I have to put that in there. So here are some of the main principles that the original SAM project was built on and which we're carrying forward with really what's just a revision and enhancement of the tools. So we're look, we are accepting the fact, there we go, 
that organization's behaviors change slowly over time. You don't get to flip a switch and suddenly be doing everything right. So we understand that you will need to do things incrementally and iteratively, make the next gain in your security posture as an organization, not just say, okay, now we're doing all of this when we used to be doing all of that. It's not going to happen. There isn't a single checklist that we could give every organization and have it work for them. That's simply a fact. When we're talking about security activities, we want to be prescriptive. We want to say, you should be doing this. Of course, there is another model out there, the BSIM, which is a commercial model, and it's actually purely observational. They say, well, we talked to organizations that we think are mature, and here are things they told us they do. So if you're doing all of those things, then maybe you're mature too. Pay us lots of money and we'll give you a letter that says we think you're mature. And then overall, it needs to be pretty simple, well-defined, and it needs to have some measures that you can actually produce. And that's where we get our model. The current state of the model is a beta website. So I snapshotted the front page. The history, back in March of 2019, the open SAM model was developed as a project. And that went on for a while and it was really just a single maintainer project and just stopped being maintained. It was revived as an OWASP project here in 2016 and version 1.1 was released. In March of, in February of 2017, sorry, the talk that I watched was March of 2017. In February of 2017, OWASP SAM version 1.5 was released. Now, one of the differences here, in version 1.1, some questions were provided for you to self-assess saying, do you do this, yes or no? What was discovered was, in many cases, you look at the question, like, does, does your organization do static security testing? And the answer was not yes, but it also wasn't no. It was, well, about 30% of our projects do. So in SAM version 1.5, the measurement tool allowed you to have those graded answers. Yes, a little less than half do. Yes, most do. I got involved during the creation of version 2.0, which was released in beta three weeks ago. So that's why I'm here. I want to make sure that you all know about this. Go out there, learn it, love it. Give us all the critical feedback so that we can improve it before it becomes a final release. A couple of the things that we're doing, that we have done in this new model, we've expanded the coverage a little bit. I would like to take some credit for some improvement in how we're doing consistency across the practice descriptions. And we're also looking at some ways to improve the scoring, to make it more meaningful, somewhat more nuanced. Just, oh, I had not meant to make this a click through. Just so that you can see, the core team is from all over the world. I actually traveled to the US a couple of months ago to attend a weekend meeting. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> Our project leader is in Belgium. We have folks in Belgium and Germany, a couple of folks in the UK. Jan is in Minneapolis, which is where we went and met in October. And then I decided I want to be part of this. So I traveled to the UK in June where we spent a week at the Open Security Summit really working on creating this first draft of 2.0. And then of course we've been working and holding sprint calls every couple of weeks at 7 a.m. New Zealand time because it's 9 p.m. in Belgium. Always fun. So the core framework, in version 1.5, there were four business functions. 
governance, construction, verification, and operations. In version 2.0, we've expanded that to five. Governance and construction is now design and implementation, and then verification and operations continue. So we've expanded from four business functions to five. We have three practices in each business function, so we've gone from 12 to 15. So the practices in governance, these might seem familiar. They show up in a lot of models. Strategy and metrics, policy and compliance, education and training, education and guidance in our case. In the design, we're looking at our threat assessment, and that's where threat modeling comes in. Some of you have heard me spend all day yesterday talking about that. Security requirements, security architecture. In implementation, we focus on secure build, secure deployment, defect management. So taking those processes and tools and our selection of tool stacks, putting that as a separate set of practices. Verification, we have architecture assessment, requirements of urban design, and security testing, and then operations, incident management, operational management, and environment management. And I was actually primary author on some of the operations areas. This is one of the things that I brought up in June and we've done an okay job on as we've gone through this draft, the, the beta version. We call out three levels of maturity in OWASP and roughly speaking, they're kind of aligned with CMMI maturity levels. So if you're at level one in the SAM, that means that you're at what might be assessed as maybe partially completing level two in a CMMI assessment. That you've got some things that are still very ad hoc and reactive and some things that are managed, but you're not really well managed yet. At level two, that's where you've gotten control of that stuff, your processes are managed, now you've got things well defined, and then level three of maturity is where you are measuring and then responding to the metrics in order to improve your processes. So here's an example. In operational management, we have two streams of activities, one around data protection, one around dealing with legacy software and decommissioning unused systems. So in data protection, we're really saying at level one, you've got some basic protections in place. You're doing the obvious stuff. At level two, we've actually gotten to the point where we have a data catalog, we have a good classification policy in place, we've actually assessed the classification of all of our data, and we have a policy that clearly says what our data pr protection practices are related to our classification level. And by level three, we are now actively watching for breaches of policy and then figuring out how to improve our practices and possibly adjust the policy in response to how our data are actually being used. One of the things about the scoring in the 1.5 model that led to a lot of pain is it's still really just talking about how broadly have we applied the practice. It doesn't include anything about how well have we applied the practice. It doesn't look at the questions like, well, I have a program and I've had it for a long time, so I score full marks, but I haven't looked at the quality. We haven't revisited the program's design in five years. So maybe it's not even relevant to where we've moved in our development practices. So if you were to score this on a quality dimension, it would be really low. We recognized this as a weakness and started talking about how we might try to do something about that. So as a basic example, you could, as you're looking at coverage, that breadth of standardization, you might be doing really well, but you could be following a completely different curve on the quality dimension. So in order to combine those, we're looking at exactly what the scoring might be. Some sort of a multi multiplicative value is where we seem to be falling. As I said, this, this part is still being developed. It's not part of the, the beta model. 
And you can see something like if we feel like we're at 80% coverage and we've managed to get only to about 50% quality, well then we give ourselves a 0.4 score. And then as you look across all the levels in one given practice, we might score really well on the level one activities, not nearly as well in level two, and really we're not anywhere on level three. So we can come up with a score at each level. Some of the open questions, and you know this went a lot faster than I thought it was going to, so you're gonna have a nice long break. So how many response values? We still wanna make this so that it's interactive, that you can use a tool to say, in response to a given question, you have a few choices. You don't have to write a narrative and then try to give it a numeric value. So what's the right number? Should there be four of them? Should there be five? Should the corresponding score values be linear? Does it need to be some kind of a curve? All of these are questions that are still being worked on. And then how do we compute your overall maturity score in a practice based on these individual values we get for each of the activities in each of the levels? You need to get more credit for completing a level three activity fully than you get for a level one activity so that you end up at, you end up getting a slightly higher overall score if you focus on a level three activity, even though you're not quite there in level two, than if you were to be fully done in level two and not have done anything in level three. So we need to make sure that we've got a way to capture that in the scoring. Now that you know what we've been doing, at least a little bit, and you know some of the things that we're trying to work on and could certainly use some help, well, would you like to get involved? First, you can go to awaspsam.org, visit the page for the version 2.0 beta model, and then go to our feedback page to provide feedback on the model. Another thing you can do is join those monthly project calls. So once a month, we get on a conference call and we generally talk about the status of the project to the broader community. Now, as I mentioned, these are focused around Central European time. So, and I can't do the time zone arithmetic as I'm typing, they are at 9.30 p.m. Central European time on the second Wednesday of the month. So that means here it's either 7.30 a.m. or 9.30 a.m., depending on which of us is in summertime. We also have a Slack channel on the, on the OWASP Slack. The channel name is Project Sam. And that's where updates are posted and questions can be raised there. And anyone who has just input or comments on what's going on in the project is welcome to join. 